hello, hello. And you know what? I've been thinking about something lately. I know that a lot of people around this time of year get a little bit stressed about exactly what they're going to bring to a holiday feast. Especially if you don't have any like super super fancy cooking skills, the idea of bringing something to a potluck might be a little overwhelming. But what I would suggest is to think of some kind of cocktail that you can bring or that you can prepare at the event. And of course, if you don't drink alcohol, that's still fine because there are plenty of really delicious mocktail recipes that you can still either prepare at the party or just kind of bring in bulk. And today I want to talk about some tips on how to decide how to prep and craft those drinks. Now, of course, there are books that exist like this witchcraft cocktail book, and they're nice and they have really cool recipes inside them, but not all of us have stuff like rosemary saffron syrup. Stuff like that gets a little crazy pretty quickly, and so when it comes to making drinks, I would suggest going back to the basics, like a good refreshing margarita. There are a lot of different recipes for some kind of holiday margarita, Christmas margarita, just a festive margarita, any kind of thing like that. They usually involve stuff like cranberry or orange, you know, liquor, obviously tequila, and in that alone, there's plenty of opportunity for magic. And actually, if we take a look at this uh, list of festive drinks by a couple of cooks, we can see all kinds of really interesting ideas on what to do for some kind of drink to bring. The first one that I really like, especially for the more wintry months, is a poinsettia cocktail, which is really just like champagne, cranberry juice, and maybe triple sec. But that little sprig of rosemary in it not only adds the magical potential, but also makes it look more like that poinsettia plant, or like, you know, any other evergreen that is around at the time. Same thing with a peppermint martini, in which you can actually take on that feeling of peppermint and chocolate liqueur to do some really interesting love magic or, you know, mental stimulation, other things like that. And of course, if you're looking for some more, you know, autumn type drinks, mulled cider, like we talked about a while back, a great way to do it. You just kind of add some bourbon or whiskey or something like that to it. And you can also do something like a hot toddy, which is, you know, whiskey and honey all kind of warmed up and heated together with some spices. A lot of these kinds of drinks use those traditional, you know, autumny, wintry spices. There's a lot of cranberry, there's a lot of cinnamon, there's a lot of clove and allspice and anise. So when you combine all that together, you're gonna get a lot of different drinks that are gonna give you all of that energy, that vigor, um, you know, all of that warm sunshine feeling that many cultures across time have really tried to capture in the colder months. That's why Interestingly, a lot of things that happen around Christmas time involve oranges, involve uh, cinnamon and ginger, and all of these other really bright, like, fire-based flavors. Remember also that things like rosemary is actually an evergreen, and one of the key components of observing any kind of winter holiday, especially in a more pagan aspect, is bringing that evergreen into the house. Be it a Christmas tree, be it holly above the door, be it just rosemary in your cocktail. Evergreen is a great way to kind of bring that feeling of life everlasting into the darker times of the month. And of course, if you're just looking to restock your cabinet on a day-to-day, -day, you know, casual afternoon, or you're looking to bring a gift, my personal recommendation would be to check out your liquor store's uh, varieties of certain types of liquor. You can absolutely get a lot of magic out of something like wine, or mead, or even beer, depending on what flavors are mixed in, but when you go to the store and you see all of these really, really cool, um, you know, flavored liquors, these vodkas and gins and other things that have had things infused into them, or like a jar of moonshine that actually has fruit still in it, you can use that for a lot of magic because a lot of the associations with those herbs, fruits, anything like that are still very much in there. I mean, a gin tonic is one of the easiest drinks in the world. Tonic water, a little lime juice, and some gin. And when you get those kind of flavored gins, you can make any variety of magic happen with pretty much just three ingredients. That's baller. And now for my crowd that would prefer not to drink alcohol, obviously not every drink uh, is going to work if you try to make it into a mocktail. If you have, as Fed and Fit says, something like an old fashioned that's predominantly hard liquor, there's, there's no real substitute for that. But a lot of the drinks that I just mentioned, the mulled cider, um, you know, these kinds of margaritas, a lot of these can work as mocktails, and the Fed and Fit has a lot of good tips on how to do that. And really the main tip when it comes to, you know, making something into a mocktail is remembering that a lot of the flavors in there are there to kind of take the edge off of that alcohol, because alcohol straight can be kind of rough. So, obviously, when you all of a sudden take that out, 
you might find that your drinks might be too sweet or anything like that, or they're just kind of lacking that, that balance. In which case, FedFit re recommends putting in like a uh, sparkling water in place of other alcohols if you can. But also, you know, instead of ginger ale, you might go for ginger beer because it's not alcoholic, but it does certainly have a lot more of a kick than actual ginger ale. Eating well also makes a really good point in which that, you know, alcohol is very drying, it's astringent, and therefore you might want to put something in your cocktails like cranberry juice, lemon juice, even vinegar, according to them, that can kind of leave that dryness in your mouth without totally messing up the flavor of the drink itself. And I know vinegar seems like a really thing to put in there, but let me tell you, I did have some hard cider with like blackberry vinaigrette in it, and it was good. Like, it works. But I mean, get creative. It doesn't take a lot of skill, thankfully, to do this kind of stuff, because really if you can just get a glass and some fruit, like uh, raspberries or blueberries, and muddle them up, uh, some fresh mint leaves to create that kind of textural feel to it, or if you kind of blend up a bunch of fruits, of uh, frozen fruits, and make it more like a cold drink, there's a lot you can do that still gives you a fun little sippy drink without having to ingest any alcohol at all. Totally safe for any kind of party. So, if you're looking for things to do for the upcoming holidays in these last couple months of the year, definitely consider making some kind of drink to bring with you. Whether it's just non-alcoholic mulled cider, whether it's some kind of margarita mix or anything like that, there's a lot you can do without absolutely like making a disaster of your kitchen. So. With that said, uh, I hope you guys have a great time brainstorming fun things to bring to your potlucks, and I will see you around next week. By the way, if you want to see these videos two weeks earlier, consider subscribing to my Patreon, where you not only get all these videos, but also recipe cards, uh, specific deity profiles, and lots of other interesting things to look at. Video tiers start at $10 a month, so definitely consider checking it out.